Hello and welcome to the Irish in the UK. Coming up on the show this week, we are at St Anne's Social Club in Birmingham for a great night's fun and entertainment. But first up, we're at Obedient Sports Centre in Disbury, Manchester for the Lancashire Senior Football Championship Final between old rivals Oshin GA of Manchester and John Mitchell's Club of Liverpool. A minute's silence has been held for Tommy Brennan, a former Oshin player who passed away recently. John Mitchell's team are getting their final tactics sorted out and the Oshin lads are getting their final instructions. The ball is thrown in and we'll be showing you some of the highlights from the first half. Hushins have got a command and lead at this stage, 2-6 to uh, 3 points. Yes, yeah, so they're doing very well after a shaky start to settle down and they look to be the most comfortable and settled team now, so they're doing well now to have that lead at half-time. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised by all the play they've got at the moment because Mitchells don't seem to be in it at this stage. Yeah, well, Hushins aren't panicking at all. Once they get possession, they're, they're holding on to it and making sure the passes are going uh, correctly and things, so they're just, that's why they have most of the play. And Cahill, of course, uh, John Mitchells, they got off to a good start to two early points. Well, they scored the first two points of the game and they scored the last point of the game, but in between, Oshins have run the show. Uh, John Mitchells are happy to let Oshins have possession of the ball, but inside they have Chris O'Connor. Uh, he scored, I think he scored 1 3 in the first half, and David Heron, the captain, is getting, picking on a lot of loose ball and he's, he's really doing well. So, what does John Mitchells need to do in the second half to uh, cut this lead down? Uh, pray. <laughs> they're not going to come back. I don't think they're going to come back. I, I think I stood here last year at the same time when Oshins were five points up and said Mitchell will come back on one and I was wrong. But this time, Oshins should see it out. Michael Malloy, their main man, he's not getting on the ball. They're losing midfield uh, and I can't see a way back for John Mitchell's whatsoever. Well, it's been a great open game, lovely game of football to watch. Oh yeah, it's definitely wide open, it's, uh, up and down the field. It's, uh, but it's, I think from Oshins, from the goalkeeper up to Paul Noon up to Christy O'Connor in the front, uh, they've all done very well. So. And it's a, it's a lovely day here at Old Bedians as well. No wind. No, no wind, no rain, no, 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 no coldness. But uh, as you can see out there, the pitch is looking very well. Credit to Oshins. This is their club and setting it up for the county pitch. It's been, it's been really well laid out today. All right. Thanks, lads. We'll see you at the full-time whistle. Thank you. Thank you. 
It's great to see some of the underage players showing off their football skills to the crowd at half time. And a big thank you to Pat and Cahill for joining us at half time and giving us their point of view. Now the teams are getting ready and the ball has been thrown in for the second half and we're going to rejoin and show you some of the highlights. <laughs> Declan, what a great day, a great display by O'Shane. Oh yeah, I couldn't have asked any more from the lads, you know. Um, we sort of, we got we got turned over by Mitchells in the league final here about six weeks ago. And ever since then, we've just put a plan in place and you couldn't have asked them to execute it any better, to be honest. Like, to be 2-6 to two points up at half time, like, you know, we had the back broken the whole thing. And that was just out of the pure work rate and effort of the lads. So, I'm absolutely delighted and um, hopefully we can now push on, like, because we, last year we didn't, so... Let's hope we can now push on in two weeks' time in all Britain. So yeah. yeah. And Killian, it was a great, great open game as well. Yeah, it was very open. Um, I suppose at times they tried to drop a lot of players back, but we kind of planned for that. Like, and we had set out our stall in terms of our training over the last four or five weeks to deal with that, how with their game plan, how to counteract it. And I can only just thank the lads. Like, they just really executed to the letter of the law what we set out for them. So it just worked for us. So yeah, we we're very happy with it. And of course, it's been coming this really over the last couple of years because Oceans are building and building, you know, and you, you've had a couple of great seasons now. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we went 12 years without a, a championship and now we've got two and two, uh, which is unbelievable. But it's sometimes you just need to break, you just need to break, make the breakthrough. Uh, and we hadn't been able to do that with Mitchells for four or five years, you know, and they were able to build for all Britons and all Ireland challenges as a result. So once now we got the breakthrough, we were adamant, you know, as a management team and as a group of players, we didn't want to just be one championship or, you know, one hit wonder. And uh, that's why actually this, I just think this championship is just a lot sweeter. Uh, certainly for me to, to put two on the bounce is just some achievement. So great, yeah. Dave, what's it like to captain a great team like this? Well, to captain any team is a great honour, really, you know, and it's great to captain a club team. And when the boys asked me to do it this year, I was delighted. And, you know, you saw out there, like, the lads just gave everything. It's easy enough captaining a group of players like that when they, you know, they just work so hard throughout the game. Now, it took us a couple of championship games to be able to get a performance like that right, and hopefully we can, we can drive it on again then. And you had a great game yourself out there. Well, it was all about just keeping the head down and trying to work as hard as you could for as long as you can and the legs gave away at the end because a bit of cramps set in, but it, it was a good, it was an enjoyable game to be part of. Now, when you were uh, giving your speech there and doing your few thank yous, you got quite emotional. It was, it's an emotional day for you, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, I, I've, um, I recently um, had a baby boy, um, so he's, uh, he's just in hospital there with his mother, so I, I just jumped out to play the game and... Um, so it all gets a little bit emotional at times, so it does, but it's, it was great. It was great to get it, great to get the win, yeah. Oh, well, listen, many congratulations to you and to your wife and your baby. Are they all OK? Yeah, all is, all is good, yeah, 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 so it's great. It's great. That's the main thing. It'll be a great night in Manchester tonight. Yeah, the way it is, well, I better go back to the hospital now first and then we'll, we'll see what happens after that then. Now, Killian, of course, the games are coming thick and fast now. Uh, you'll be playing in the All-Britain pretty soon. Yeah, I suppose we're out now in two weeks, but 
to be honest, we have we didn't even plan for it really. We just had our stall set out just to get over today. Um, we didn't overlook today's game, so we'll enjoy tonight and come Tuesday night we'll refocus and for the plan ahead. Yeah. And of course here told me the is the ground, the pitch, everything was in great order today to play football. Oh, it's unbelievable. I mean, um, me and Killing came down yesterday morning to check the pitch and I was pristine. Um, and uh, even the hurling, the guys who were playing the hurling final yesterday were just commenting on it. Like you wouldn't, you wouldn't get as good a pitch as that in most part, most counties in Ireland. Uh, and the fact that we were able to field three finals there over this weekend, it's just it's a great achievement for Oshins and for obedience. Uh, and it's a great sort of um, way for Lancashire to sort of showcase the football and the hurling in the county. So we're delighted with the setup, and we thank Andy Smith and the guys uh, who've been putting in serious work, Thomas Finley cutting the grass and Neil Farron. So we just have to thank them for putting it in such a good shape for today and allowing us to play on it. I suppose previous guys who put the pitch in place here and you know put the foundation of the club in place, to be able to get a place like this to play is, is a credit. It's brilliant. Well done. Well done, lads. Congratulations Thanks. and go and enjoy your night tonight. Thanks, Thanks very much. Thank Cheers. Congratulations to Oshin GA on being crowned Lancashire champions for 2018. And well done to John Mitchell's club who contributed to a great game of football. Now it's time for us to take a short break. Don't go away. We'll see you in part two when we'll be at St Anne's Social Club in Birmingham. Welcome back to the show. Now if you'd like to look at some of the programmes that we've broadcast over the last 20 months, well you can visit our website, theirishintheuktv.com. Now, a few weeks ago, we went along to St Anne's Social Club in Birmingham. Frank Nelson was providing the entertainment, and what a great night it turned out to be. He's Jerry, tell me a little bit about St Anne's Centre here, how it's doing. Well, St Anne's Centre, Martin, is absolutely thriving at the minute. We've, as you can see from the board behind us, we have some great stuff coming up. And, you know, we're very happy with the turnout and it's great the support we're getting, you know. When we first came to St Anne's, when we, myself and Jake took over the, the music side of things at St Anne's, Frank Nelson opened the show for us and he's been a a good favourite ever since. You're doing really well and you're very close to the Birmingham Iris Centre here, so which speaks really volumes for your centre here, how well it's run and... You know, the whole thing about um, us and the Irish Centre, if people talk to one another and tell them what's going on Saturday night, what's going on a Friday night or Sunday night, we won't clash because we're thin enough on the ground anyway yeah. without, you know, losing our crowd down there and your crowd up here and all that sort of thing. That's that doesn't, that shouldn't come into the equation at all, you know. And, and Jake, how are you finding it, been uh, managing here and working with Jerry? I love it. I love it. Meeting new people every week and a few people coming down from the Irish Centre and different things. You meet new people every single week and given the promotions of the, the, the dances and stuff like that, it's great to have. And there's a great Irish uh, congregation around this area. There is. Well, we're in Digbeth, which is at the the Irish Quarter in Birmingham, so it's, we're in the, the heart of the, the city really with uh, all the Irish folk around ourselves. Now you're no mean musician yourself, are you? No, uh, <laughs> I, play, I play the, uh, the button accordion. Um, I won a, a tournament a few years ago, uh, Midlands region and the uh, England region as well. Unfortunately didn't get too far with the, the Oil Island, but it was a good experience. So for people that might like to come down and join you here from any part of the country, uh, when are you open? When is the club open, Jerry? Well, the club uh, runs, uh, Trudy is very flexible, the, or the manager of the club and the licence holder and everything like that. Uh, we're open Friday nights, Saturday nights. We don't do Sunday nights because the Sunday night is an Irish centre night. <laughs> Trudy, you 
must be really proud with the way the centre has been run here and how it's going at the moment. Oh, Martin, it's going so well. Um, never thought it would take off so well, to be quite honest. So it's getting very popular. All the bands are coming over from Ireland and the local bands as well. That works really well. And the customers love it. And it's a, a lovely, lovely, friendly atmosphere here. And all your staff as well, they're all friendly with all your customers. Yeah, I think, you know, Granny, if she taught me anything, and like the girls behind the bar, you know, it doesn't cost anything to have manners. It's nice to be nice. And we feel that we are welcoming to everybody here, and people will tell you the same thing. So we do pride ourselves on being probably the best bar staff in Birmingham, really. <laughs> now, you're a very busy lady, because, of course, you wear a couple of different hats. You're a manager here at the centre, but you're also the manager of the Birmingham Irish Association. Of course, they do wonderful work here in the city. Tell me a little bit about the Birmingham Irish. Um, I've worked with the Birmingham Irish for 15 years now. We've um, got quite a lot of projects. Um, the one I'm working closely with at the moment is our dementia centre, just for Irish people. Um, it's been set up nearly three years now. It's the only one of its kind in the whole of the UK. We have Irish bands, Irish dancers, entertainers, uh, so we keep their minds active every day. Um, a lot of the work we do is to help family members because we find that they struggle um, and it's hard to cope with somebody suffering with dementia. Birmingham Irish Association, you cover a lot of other um, things for the Irish uh, community here. Yeah. Um, we have, um, we do benefits, housing, uh, we have solicitors that come in, we, do, we go to tribunals to make sure everyone's getting what they are entitled to. Um, we do Irish pensions, we do Irish passports, we do online Irish passports. We've got a big cultural team, we've got a health team. Um, oh, the list is endless. And I know that you're always trying to put on great cultural events as well. We are. On the 7th of November we have um, the Embassy coming from London. A um, bit of music, um, plenty of food and dancing and we're going to invite all the Irish organisations in Birmingham to attend as well. Frank, great to see you back here in Birmingham again. Jerry looks after us very well and all his staff and it's a pleasure to be here, it's great to be here. Now you're busy at home? Very busy, thank God, yeah. We're just after doing a weekend in Donegal now and it was a great success, it was the first one I'd done and thanks to everyone that came out and supported it. And we're busy all year round now, thank God, you know, recording and writing and I have a new 30 CD, out, 30 track CD, 30 years writing songs and 30 years recording. That's on release now and we have a new single tribute to the great Big Tom, the likes of Tom McBride, we'll never see again. That's on it, it's getting tremendous play on the radio stations at home now, it's going great. Well many congratulations as well on celebrating 30 years, fair play to you. Well Martin, thanks very much for having us here and for looking after us every time. This is not the first time and hopefully it won't be the last. <laughs> now Michael, of course, you're a great uh, County Leithram man and Mohal, Mohal man as well. Leithram man, well, just five miles from Mohal, I suppose. Uh, so as regards music then, as I said, Frank and myself being soldiering together, there isn't a, a road in the country that we don't, he doesn't need sat nav at all, he's a great navigator. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you couldn't separate us, I think we're in trying to get into the Guinness Book of Records. <laughs> No, Michael is a, is, is a great man, a gentleman, and he's with me for the last 30 years. And as the saying goes, we've ploughed every road together, and a better man you couldn't have. It. But my dear, we're dear. It's been a great night here at St. Hans. Have you enjoyed it? I really enjoyed it, Martin. It's a almost great night altogether, yeah. Dancing and lipping around and having the crack. And you're a mighty mover on the floor. Oh, not too bad, Martin. I can move a bit when I have to. <laughs> and I noticed that you've got a new hairstyle tonight. I have, yeah. I had a Kojak job, this is. <laughs> I don't have much to comb anymore. I just do it all with a rag. <laughs> I thought it was Christmas, so I thought I'd light myself up a bit. <laughs> Patricia, uh, you're a Dublin lady. 
How did you meet this man? In the Irish Centre. Uh, he asked me to dance and then he asked me for a kiss and I says, why would you want to do that? Yeah. And he says, because I want to. And I says, well, I don't want to. <laughs> but he ended up taking me home. So have you got a joke for me tonight, yeah, Mike? This yank went over to County Kerry and he started selling vacuum cleaners. And he knocked at this farmer's door and the, the, the yank said to the farmer, would you like to buy a vacuum cleaner? And the farmer said, yes, I would. He said, but what does that do? Oh, he said, it picks up all the muck around the floor. He said, if you throw cow dung in there or horse muck, it'll pick it up. And he said, if he doesn't pick it up, if it doesn't pick it up, he said, I'll go down on my two knees and I, I'll, I'll eat it up. He said, you better start doing that now because there's no electricity in this house. <laughs> I was walking down the street today when I heard a call the door away. Now, I believe that you're off to Ireland next week. Next Tuesday, yeah, we're going for a fortnight, maybe a month, yeah, if we can afford it. Pat's paying, so no problem going there now. I have to mug him to pay. <laughs> it's, it must be a good while ago since you opened your wallet to make. Not ever go, Martin. Yeah, she opened it for me. <laughs> <laughs> she said I'm awful fond of the Queen's picture. I am. How is the farm going for you, Mick? Very good, Martin. Great now. We're starting to sell, myself and Paul are starting to sell the lambs now, and they're going up a bit now. They're about 90, 95. So we're feed, hand feeding them to get them up to five kilos. So we'll be all right. We'll make a few pounds this, this year, I hope. Mick, I hope to see you soon. Yeah, Martin, and Paul was asking for you, and we hope to see you soon as well. And okay. the next time you come, I hope you're not afraid of the more goslins. They're all right. They won't bite you. They're all right now. They're doing well, Martin. They'll be all right for Christmas. And then the horse don't bite. He won't take the fingers out of you or nothing. But the next time you better get your leg over him and we'll go for the right spin. Yourself and, yourself and Patricia can ride him around the field. Well, what a great night. And we met such lovely people in Birmingham. Thank you all for your lovely hospitality. Whilst we were there, I was asked to do a couple of requests. So here we go. It's a very special request for the Stenson family from Toureen in County Mayo and the McKeonan family from Glangevnan in County Cavan. And this comes from Tom and Geraldine Stenson in Birmingham. And they said to send you all their love. And I can tell you that Tom and Geraldine never left the floor all night dancing. Now don't forget Henry McGlade is back next Thursday evening at 7 o'clock and we are here with the Irish in the UK at 7.30. Both shows are repeated every Saturday evening between 8 and 9 p.m. and again on a Tuesday lunchtime between 12.30 and 1.30 p.m. All on Showcase TV Sky 455. See you next time. Hey.